It had been over a century since Brian, once a young boy, became trapped in an immortal curse, splitting his soul between the bodies of two women, Julie and Dina. Through the years, Brian had learned to live in both bodies at once, his consciousness occupying them simultaneously. At first, it had been a way to cheat death, but as time passed, it became a prison of its own. Brian had grown to love Dina, but how could he love her fully when half of him was always somewhere else, stuck in Julie's body? Now, after all these years, Brian found himself standing in front of the fortune teller's shop once again, the place where his fate had been sealed so long ago. But the fortune teller who had cursed him was gone, replaced by her son, David, a handsome young man who, despite the passage of time, looked as if he hadn't aged a day past eighteen. David met Brian's eyes, his gaze sharp and knowing. I've been waiting for you, he said. I know what you've come for. I need to break the curse, Brian said, his voice tinged with desperation. I've lived in both Julie and Dina's bodies for too long. I love Dina, but I can't keep splitting myself like this. David nodded slowly, as if he had already known the answer. The curse isn't just about living forever, Brian. It's about control, holding on to two lives at once. To break it, you need to reunite your soul. But to do that, you must give up your immortality. Brian hesitated. Immortality had once seemed like a gift, but now it felt like a heavy weight dragging him down. He had lived too long in borrowed bodies, watching time pass him by while others aged and moved on. Now, it was time to make a choice. I don't care about immortality anymore, Brian said at last. I just want to be whole again. I want Julie and Dina to be free, and I want to love Dina for who she is. David smiled faintly. Then you know what you must do. The process was painful, more painful than Brian had imagined. His soul, split between two bodies for so long, resisted being pulled back together. He felt as if he were being torn apart from the inside, his consciousness flickering between Julie and Dina as he tried to hold on to them both. But slowly, agonizingly, the pieces of his soul began to knit themselves back together, pulling him into one form, one person. When it was over, Brian collapsed to the floor, gasping for breath. He was whole again, his soul no longer divided. Julie and Dina stood over him, their faces no longer filled with the distant, haunted look of someone being controlled. They were free. In the weeks that followed, life began to return to normal. Julie and Dina, now in their mid-twenties, began to rebuild their lives, no longer tethered to Brian's consciousness. They had their own memories, their own identities, though they would always share the strange bond of having lived with Brian inside them for so long. David, now in his mid-thirties, finally began to age as well. Freed from the curse that had kept him frozen in time, he welcomed the passage of years with open arms. Brian, too, embraced his newfound mortality, cherishing every fleeting moment he had with Dina, who he loved more than ever now that he could love her fully. Years later, the three of them, Brian, Julie, and Dina, had a son together. They named him Ethan, a symbol of their shared journey through time and transformation. Though the curse had been broken, its legacy lingered in subtle ways. Brian's experience of living in two bodies at once had forever changed him, shaping his understanding of love, identity, and control. Julie and Dina, too, felt the echoes of their strange shared history. There was an unspoken connection between them, as if their souls had once danced together in a fragile, beautiful balance. But now, they were free to live their own lives, no longer bound by the past, but forever changed by it. As for Brian, he no longer longed for immortality. Instead, he found peace in the simple, fleeting moments of life, the laughter of his son, the warmth of Dina's hand in his, the gentle passage of time. He had once sought to live forever, but now, he knew that the beauty of life lay in its impermanence. And that, he realized, was the true gift of breaking the curse. For over a century, Brian had lived in two bodies, his mind split between Julie and Dina, two women whose lives had been entangled in the strange curse. What had started as a desperate bid for immortality had turned into an endless cycle of control and longing. Brian could live forever, but what was the point if he was always fractured, never fully present in any one life? He stood outside the fortune teller's shop, the place where it had all begun. The wooden sign creaked in the wind, the paint faded by time. 
but the shop itself looked untouched, as if it had been frozen in a moment. The door swung open, and there stood David, the son of the fortune teller, looking exactly as he had when Brian last saw him, eighteen, eternally youthful. I knew you'd come back, David said, his voice soft but firm. His eyes held centuries of knowledge, far beyond what his young face revealed. You're here to break the curse. Brian nodded, his heart heavy. I can't keep living like this. I love Dina, but how can I love her when part of me is always somewhere else, in Julie's body? They deserve their own lives. I don't want to keep controlling them. David's expression softened, though the weight of the truth was clear. To break the curse, you must reunite your soul and give up your immortality. Once you do, you'll become whole again, but you'll live out the rest of your life like any other human. The words were both a relief and a fear. For a century, Brian had been caught between the temptation of eternal life and the cost of his fractured existence. But now, the weight of years and the love he felt for Dina overshadowed the allure of immortality. I don't care about living forever anymore, Brian said, his voice cracking with emotion. I just want to be myself again. I want Julie and Dina to be free. David nodded. Then you are ready. The ritual was far more painful than Brian had anticipated. His soul, split between two bodies for over a century, resisted the change. It felt like his mind was being torn apart as he flickered between the perspectives of Julie and Dina. He had been two people for so long that the thought of becoming one again was terrifying. As David chanted in a language older than time, a strange, glowing energy began to surround Brian. It pulsed through him, wrenching his consciousness from Julie and Dina. He could feel the connections to their bodies weakening, as though invisible threads binding them together were being severed one by one. Each snap sent a wave of pain through him, but also a sense of release, of freedom. When the ritual was complete, Brian collapsed to the floor, gasping for breath. He was whole again, for the first time in over a century. Julie and Dina stood beside him, dazed but free from his control. They blinked, as if waking from a long dream. Though they retained the memories of their shared connection with Brian, they were no longer bound to him. Brian looked at Dina, his heart swelling with love and sorrow. He had controlled her for so long, but now she was free. He feared she would resent him for everything he had taken from her, her autonomy, her life. But Dina knelt beside him, her eyes full of empathy. I've always known it wasn't really you, she whispered. I felt your love, even when you were split. But now, we can start over. Brian's chest tightened with emotion. For the first time in centuries, he felt like himself, not a fractured soul, not a controller of others. He was just Brian. Years passed, and life for Brian, Julie, and Dina returned to a sense of normalcy, though none of them could forget the strange bond they shared. Julie and Dina, now in their mid-twenties, built their lives anew, free from the haunting shadow of Brian's presence in their bodies. Yet there was something about their relationship with him that remained unshakable, a deep connection, not just from the shared curse, but from their time spent together in the strangest of circumstances. David, having freed Brian and the others, began to age at last. By the time Brian reunited his soul, David had already reached his mid-thirties, embracing the passage of time with quiet grace. No longer the eternal boy, David lived his own life, no longer tied to the mystical forces that had kept him frozen. Brian, Julie, and Dina formed a family in the years that followed, their relationship evolving into something new and beautiful. Though Brian had been the one to control both women, the power dynamic had shifted entirely. They lived as equals now, their lives intertwined not by force, but by choice. Together, they had a son, Ethan, whose birth symbolized a fresh beginning for them all. Brian, now fully mortal, watched his son grow with wonder. The immortality that had once driven him to seek control over others was no longer a desire. Instead, he cherished the moments that life offered, knowing that each one was fleeting, precious. He and Dina raised Ethan with love, while Julie, forever bound by their shared history, remained an important part of their lives. Though they were all free, the connection they had could never be undone. The echoes of the curse still lingered, even after all was said and done. Though Brian was no longer split between two bodies, the experience of living in two lives at once left its mark on him. 
he often found himself reflecting on the strange intimacy he had shared with Julie and Dina, the duality of their souls merging with his. He had learned more about identity, love, and the nature of control than he ever could have imagined. Julie and Dina, too, carried the memories of their years living with Brian in their minds. There was an understanding between them, one that went beyond words. Though their lives had been their own for years, they often shared silent glances, as if they could still feel the remnants of Brian's presence lingering within them. But now, they were free, free to live, to love, to grow old together. Brian, having abandoned the pursuit of immortality, found joy in the small moments. The laughter of his son, the warmth of Dina's embrace, the changing of the seasons, all of it was more beautiful now that he knew his time was limited. He no longer feared death. Instead, he welcomed the passage of time as a gift, a reminder that life was meant to be lived, not controlled. And as the years went on, Brian, Julie, Dina, and their son Ethan became the true legacy of the curse, a legacy not of control or immortality, but of love, freedom, and the beauty of transformation. One evening, as Brian sat by the window, watching the sunset, he reflected on the long journey he had taken. From a boy seeking immortality, to a man learning to let go, he had come full circle. The curse had taught him that time was not the enemy, but rather the greatest gift. And in the quiet moments, with his family by his side, Brian knew that the life he had now was worth more than an eternity of control. For the first time in centuries, Brian was truly at peace. For over a century, Brian lived two lives at once, split between the bodies of Julie and Dina, forever conscious of their every movement, thought, and emotion. He was a ghost inhabiting their skin, always present, but never truly there. He watched time erode the world around him as he remained frozen, tethered to these two women by the curse cast by a fortune teller so long ago. What had once been his desperate quest for immortality had turned into an unrelenting burden. Julie and Dina lived their lives outwardly as normal women, but inside, they both felt the presence of Brian, a constant whisper in their minds. Dina, especially, had grown to love Brian despite the strange circumstances, feeling his emotions flow through her. Over time, she had come to accept his presence, though she longed for him to be whole again. Julie, on the other hand, fought it, yearning for her freedom. Brian had loved Dina for decades, but how could he love her when his soul was incomplete? How could he love her fully when half of him was always with Julie? The weight of his split existence became unbearable. He needed to break the curse, not just for his sake, but for theirs. Brian returned to the fortune teller's shop after 100 years, standing before its weathered door with a heart full of dread and hope. The last time he had been here, the fortune teller had been an old woman, wise beyond her years, her words dripping with the weight of prophecy. But now, her son, David, stood in her place, young, eternally eighteen, yet carrying an ancient presence that seemed to peer through time. David greeted Brian with a calm, knowing smile. You're ready now, aren't you? His voice was gentle but filled with the gravity of his knowledge. You've lived long enough in two worlds, torn between two bodies. Brian nodded, his voice strained. I need to break the curse. I can't keep controlling them. I love Dina, but I can't give her what she deserves like this. And Julie, she deserves to live her life without me inside her. David's face softened with understanding. The curse you carry isn't just about your immortality. It's about control, possession, and the fragmenting of your soul. To break it, you must reunite your soul into one body. But doing so will mean letting go of your immortality. Brian hesitated, feeling the fear of mortality grip him. He had lived for over a century, untouched by time. The thought of aging, of death, made his heart pound in his chest. But then he thought of Dina, of the love he could never truly give her while his soul remained divided. He thought of Julie, who deserved to be free. And in that moment, Brian knew what he had to do. I don't want immortality anymore, Brian said, his voice resolute. I just want to be myself again. I want Dina and Julie to be free. David's eyes sparkled with an ancient power as he gestured for Brian to follow him into the shop. Then we will begin. The ritual was excruciating. Brian's soul, which had been split between two bodies for so long, fought against being pulled back together. 
It was as if every fiber of his being resisted the change, clinging to the existence it had known for a century. His consciousness flickered between Julie and Dina, feeling their confusion, their fear, as the threads that had bound them to him began to unravel. David's voice echoed in the dimly lit room, chanting in a language that predated time itself. The air grew thick with magic, swirling around Brian, tearing at his very essence. Pain surged through him, and for a moment, he feared he would be torn apart entirely. But then, slowly, agonizingly, he felt his soul begin to knit itself back together, pulling him into one form, one person. When it was over, Brian collapsed to the floor, his breath ragged. He was whole again. His consciousness no longer flickered between Julie and Dina, he was himself, fully, for the first time in over a century. Julie and Dina stood over him, their eyes wide with the weight of their newfound freedom. They were no longer bound to him, no longer vessels for his fractured soul. Dina knelt beside him, her hand resting gently on his shoulder. You're back, she whispered, her voice filled with both relief and love. You're finally back. Brian looked up at her, his heart full of emotions he had suppressed for so long. I'm sorry, he said, his voice trembling. I never wanted to hurt you. Dina smiled softly, her eyes full of understanding. You didn't. I've always felt your love, even when you were split between us. But now, we can be together, truly together. Julie, standing nearby, watched them with a complicated mix of emotions. She had always been the one who resisted, who fought against Brian's presence in her life. But now, she felt an odd sense of loss, as if a part of her had been taken away. And yet, she knew it was for the best. She was free. Years passed, and the strange bond between Brian, Dina, and Julie evolved into something new. Freed from the curse, Brian and Dina grew closer than ever, their love deepening now that they could experience life together fully. They married and soon had a son, Ethan, who became the center of their world. Julie, now free from Brian's control, remained a constant presence in their lives. The bond the three of them had formed during the century of shared existence was too strong to be broken by the simple return of Brian's soul to one body. Julie and Dina, in particular, shared a deep connection, a bond forged not just by circumstance, but by the unique experience of having shared their minds with Brian. Though Brian was no longer immortal, he found peace in the passing of time. He no longer feared death, for he had lived long enough to understand that the beauty of life lay in its impermanence. Each moment with Dina, each laugh from his son, each sunset was more precious now that he knew his days were numbered. Even though the curse had been broken, its legacy lingered in subtle ways. Brian, Julie, and Dina carried the memories of their shared existence like a quiet hum in the background of their lives. At times, Brian could still feel the echo of what it had been like to live in two bodies at once, to experience life from multiple perspectives. It gave him a unique understanding of identity and love, one that deepened his connection with Dina and Julie. Dina, too, often reflected on the strange intimacy she had shared with Brian during the curse. Though it had been unnatural, there was something undeniably profound about their connection. Now, free from that control, she and Brian could build something real, something true. As for Julie, though she had been the one who fought against the curse the most, she couldn't deny the bond she still felt with Brian and Dina. They were more than just friends or lovers, they were connected in a way that transcended ordinary relationships. Together, they had formed a family, one bound not just by love, but by the strange, shared history that had shaped their lives. In the quiet moments, when the house was still and Ethan was asleep, Brian would sit by the window, watching the world go by. He had once sought immortality, driven by fear of death and the desire for control. But now, as he watched the sun dip below the horizon, casting the sky in shades of gold and purple, he knew that life's true beauty lay in its fleeting nature. He had lived for over a century, but it was these moments, these small, precious moments, that he cherished most. With Dina by his side and Ethan's laughter filling the house, Brian had found peace, not in living forever, but in living fully. The curse was broken, but its lessons would stay with him forever.